We are living in the wake of the release of the new CDF document, Dignitas Infinita. It sounds a little bit like a car commercial or something. I want to get the new Tesla Infinita. And look, at this point, we pretty much know the deal with the Francis pontificate, unless you're especially slow or, or you, you, you try not to get obvious points. Everything is an angle on a doctrinal attack, a doctrinal revolution. Some are slower attacks, more plodding, more canting. Others are more deliberate. This is a, a, pro, a historical process that's part of the Hegelian dialectic called punctuated equilibrium, where the revolutionaries keep the attack going almost level constantly, but, but slight, with, a, with a slightly positive slope. You know, always a little bit uphill, moving toward their goal. And then with punctuated jumps up. So we got a punctuated jump up in the revolutionary candor and the revolutionary program of Pope Francis I in April of 2016. We got another one in 2019. We got another one in 2022. It, can, it tends to be every three years we get a big leap up where we're plotting up slightly linearly. It almost looks level, but always heading upward. Jump up with Amor Slatitia, jump up with the Amazon Synod, jump up with the um, Synod on Synodality. And I would say that with regard to Dignitas Infinita, the document that was released early this week by Tucho Fernandez, there's, uh, it's closer to the near level plodding gradual progression of Francis's progressivism than to a, a big jump up. So I, I um, but, but there, maybe it's a little bit in between. In this show today, this episode of Rules for Retrogrades, I plan to show you how and why you might consider it something in between, but closer to the, the level, steady, constant attack of Francis I on the church that's been going on for 11 years or so at this point. That's what today's episode will be in. How to say infinite dignity is errant. There are ways it's errant. How it's not errant, or at least how it's arguable. And then I'm going to make an analogy that I, I hope avails you all of um, tools for self-critique in Catholicism characteristic of uh, the post-conciliar era writ large. So those are the, th the three things I hope to do today. Dignitas infinita. I am not accustomed to the claim that, you know, Pope Splanners use, that news about Francis or the Vatican under Francis has overstepped its bounds and specifically to say that the commentariat has overstepped by claiming Francis has overstepped. Maybe that's happened a little bit this week. I, I'm seeing reports of, um, Mirky, you, you, you uh, hop out, sweetheart. <laughs> Having a Steph Curry moment. Yeah, it, I'll see you downstairs, sweetheart. I'm hearing, <laughs> I'm hearing reports that this is a satanic document, that it's an you know, like the next phase in Francis's evil plan. Now, that I'm not saying that Francis doesn't have an evil plan, so everyone calm down. I'm just saying Francis has never, even if this were the next big punctuated jump up, the big revolutionary attack that happens about once every three years, he never, ever, places into the title of the document the plan of attack. So Amoris Laetitia, we call it the joy of sex, right? But it really, what the way he intended that Latin to translate is, or transliterate, is the joy of love. 
Sounds great. Do you love love? Do you love joy? I joy love. I love joy. <laughs> he Now, chapter eight has some really, really, really not difficult, but tricky to parse revolutionary language that took a year or six months at least for even his fellow travelers to say, is this what you meant? And he said, yeah. And it was revolutionary, same as I said it was in April 2016. But he didn't put it in the title. So the Infinite Dignity document has presented folks with this weird titular um, moment whereupon common Catholics and some of the um, commentariat that just know something's wrong with Francis will say, human dignity is not infinite. Human beings can sin, right? I, I, feel, like, I feel like a Pope explainer. I, I, I'm not. But there's a really, really simple distinction. When you begin studying metaphysics, you learn the difference between infinitude and eternity. So I think I'll, uh, the majority of the commentary since this is category A, an error that I don't think the document actually makes or errors that the does, document doesn't actually apparently make. The first item of this first category would be um, infinite does not mean eternal. Think of infinite as signifying the idea that um, a given Quantity is non-quantifiable. You either have it or you don't have it. That's, that's the sense in which human beings have dignity. Dignity is marked by our image and likeness, that is will and intellect, to the creator. So any human being has what's called <clears throat> a plenary existential goodness, an abundant existential goodness. Insofar as he was created by God and he was made in the image and likeness of God insofar as you have a rational will and an intellect that, that, that correspond with each other. So there's an existential perfection constitutive of human beings based on a kind of special unity. If we go into the metaphysics, it gets really boring and hard. It means um, not only individuality, but particularity. It's like chapter four of the De Ante et Essentia. Boring and difficult at the same time, like Niles Crane says. But you're both individual and particular. They don't mean the same thing. And every individual member of the species who's, a, who's got a particular form unique to him but also universal, shares in rational animality. This means a rational will and an intellect. And in a very real sense, and a non pope splaining sense, you guys know I'm the least to pope, last to pope splain on planet Earth. Just in an absolutely real sense, our dignity, because, you know, Jesus says most people go to hell. That kind of proves I'm not Pope's landing right away. The Pope doesn't seem to think anyone does. He's, you know, item number 253. He's majorly wrong about Catholic teaching. Jesus says most people go to hell. The path to perdition is broad and most find it. The path to heaven is narrow and few find it. So if, if this document were called dignity eternal or eternal dignity, meaning it's never ending, that infinite dignity that human beings seem to enjoy by nature, by their quiddity, by their quiditative expression, the existential perfection of a human being based on special unity, then that would be wrong because human, most humans go to hell, it's, it's told, and um, your infinite dignity ends at a moment in time. That doesn't... The fact that it's not eternal doesn't keep it from being infinite. The fact that it's infinite doesn't mean it's also eternal. So sorry to be technical here, but this is one of those things you learn when you're studying metaphysics. Is there's, Infinite just means it's 
non-quantifiable. It's non-fractile. A human being, qua human being, has dignity and it doesn't, in, one human doesn't enjoy dignity in greater share than another. Okay, so that, that's it. So dignity can be infinite without being eternal. And a lot of folks online were, were just said, I mean, this is literally one of those things you learn. You know, infinite does not mean eternal and people mistake this. And I, I, I didn't even study theology, I studied philosophy, right? So you see people putting it into the theological context. Oh, infinite and eternal are, are interchangeable terms. They seem to be presupposing. And then I've corrected a few people and the, it's almost like, well, this is Tim Gordon. He's definitely not pope explaining. He's the last guy to pope explain. But this is a very real distinction in metaphysics that antedates in my mind and method and expression any kind of theological usage of it. Your theology is usually kind of bastardizing philosophical terms, to be honest, just using them insofar as they're convenient. And so I, I, I've long distinguished between infinitude and eternality. Do you understand? Like someone, it can be, um, in, in some sense, uh, if I turn the lights on in this room, though I wouldn't use the expression, they're infinitely on. The lights are on as long as they're on. That doesn't mean that the light switch can't go off in 30 seconds. It just means that it's a non-fractile metric when the lights are either on or off. Human beings either share in the plenary existential goodness of being made in the image likeness of God, having rational will and intellect, or they don't. Until we ask Thomas. Now, Th Thomas Aquinas will, uh, who I can pretty much always side with, will present a counterargument, and we're going to talk about that in a second when we move to category B, where the, this document is errant. But I just want to say, it's kind of like you'd say, the lights are infinitely off right now. That doesn't mean they're eternally off. I just, I don't use the overhead lights in this room when I use my, my box lights over here, my soft lights. So they're infinitely off right now, meaning in a non-fractile way, they can't be half on or off. They're just off. But they're not eternally off. As soon as I finish this video, first thing I do, I turn off the box lights and I go turn on the overhead lights. And since I'm talking about the overhead lights, not the box lights, they're infinitely but not eternally switched off now. So people were calling the document satanic based on this alone. I don't really have a big problem with saying that this pontificate has designs on real diabolic evil. I never have had that problem. So that... That's the big proposition you'd be hoping to avoid by Pope's planning were this Pope's planning. It's not. I'm just saying the folks that have been rendering these determinations I've seen online just don't have the training to parse infinitude from eternality. And it's a, it's a huge distinction. It's like there, there, there. It's as basic as that, just at the level of um, philosophic know-how.